Rolling. the sky podcast in episode 29 of catch the sky podcast it's always sunny with dick we briefly touched on the conversation surrounding women's voices you could totally tell this is written by a man are you guys kidding me <laughs> what is this script i was given to read let it rip dick in tonight's episode we're going to center around the specific topic with a purpose to analyze cultural perceptions surrounding women's voices basically you're going to hear a lot of this woman's voice and to do this, you're going to be joined by me and a couple dicks. Say hello, guys. <laughs> it's a trio Hi. of dicks tonight. <laughs> Whole lot of dicks tonight. We're going to cover the various aspects of women's voices with a focus on the absence of women's voices, the difference between men and women's voices, tone, pitch, and questioning the systems which lead to voiceless females. Again, you can totally tell this was written by a man. As always, <laughs> you can interact with us on Twitter at CTS Terry, CTS Safe, and on Instagram at Catch the Sky Podcast. And you can find me, Dick Francisco, on Instagram at the Dick Francisco, and on Twitter at I'm Dick Francisco. Gentlemen, how are you guys tonight? Brilliant. I'm well. I'm excited to have Dick. We're excited to have you back. And by the way, this was Terry's, <laughs> this was T's idea to have you read this, to give you a voice. I disagreed with it. I wanted to write. And so I appreciate you reading my words that I wrote uh, yeah, of your lacked own free will all volition. all foreplay. <laughs> all foreplay lacked. Got right to the point. You could clearly tell a man wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> but you said it of your own free will. Did you not? <laughs> I mean, if being strapped to this microphone enclosed in this, you know, echoing room is free will, fine. Reading the words that were so, handed to her by a man. Yep. It's March. Oh, hi, March. And Do you guys know voices? what March is? <laughs> it I is... Told me earlier. The third month of the year. Yep, yep. It's endometrios endometriosis awareness month. Yep, yep, it is, right? Ooh, but ooh, you guys were ooh. aware before March, right? Shamrock shakes. It's spring training in Arizona. Mm -hmm. March Madness. I'm not surprised that you guys don't know this or you're playing dumb. That's the Ides dumb, of March. Not yours, right? It is... Also, Women's History Month. The but Saints you go marching know in. That because women's voices have been silenced, therefore, we're not a part of history. You know of the Her Story movement? That's 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 more of an academic thing. But I didn't I didn't like I, ingrained in my head. February is Black History Month. That's been ingrained. I don't think I know of anybody else's months. I couldn't tell you when Native American month is or Asian American or. Or I know when Breast Cancer Man Awareness Month is. Of the Civil War. We like titties. Yes, because of the NFL, right? They connected that. Yeah, so March as Women's History Month, all those women holidays that are predominantly about women seem to be all smacked into this one month. Hey, at least we got one with 31 days, right? right. Women's History Month, Endometriosis Awareness Month. I believe, fact check me on this, International Women's Day possibly lands here in March. Um and I'm here to just say that we as women are more than just a month. Thank you very much. <laughs> but happy to take on a little opportunity during this month to raise some awareness and get our voices heard. So I've the, the women I've talked to about this specific issue include you, Dick, and then former classmates of mine, 
And then some folks I know in the journalism industry, why are they, they seem to perceive that women are judged more harshly for the sound of their voice. And I've had a mixed bag of opinions. I would imagine it's 2021 in March, right? And so things are getting better comparatively to when Margaret Thatcher was altering her voice so that she could sound powerful. But what is it about women's voices that people have an issue with? Can I yeah, say so something? I think, you know, oh, certainly, T. Sorry, real quick before you res respond to that. I just wanted to throw in that I was watching A New Hope tonight. And for whatever reason, Princess Leia has a British accent at the beginning of the movie. And then halfway through just ditches it. Carrie Fisher? Yeah. It's like a fake British accent, and then she ditches it. What's up with that? Maybe proof that we she... don't necessarily care about her voice as long as we like how she looks, right? <laughs> but here, but I'll, no, I mean, I'm just being honest, right? Like, oh, that's oh. a detail that doesn't matter, right? Um, women's voices don't matter. Well, um, I don't want to jump the gun. Stay tight on her ears, right? Yeah. I don't want to <laughs> jump the gun too much, but that's kind of the vibe that I get from media these days it's really just more about how they look as opposed to how they sound yeah unless they sound too shrill then they're just like oh so kind of like d that, though, in the episode of always <laughs> so sunny that we mentioned on the last episode what was that episode 29 that you started this whole thing with when you, we got derailed on this that. conversation, and I'm not letting you guys do it again. Absolutely not. No, we're not getting derailed on this conversation. So back to Safe's comment. What were about we talking about? Why why women's voices are judged, you know, and, and the fact that they're judged. So I think you're right, right? Things are certainly changing. But let's just be honest, like in media, you're right, the objectification of women. I and give her accent a six. Why, why the women, the way women look matters. But when it comes to judging women's voices, let's talk about women that are in, you know, the media field then, right? So let's talk about journalists. Let's talk about newscasters. Let's talk about, you know, radio DJs. Let's talk about podcasters, right? Anybody who's using their voice, women are judged based on the sound of their voice more often. You will hear this from anybody in that industry. As a female, that is where they get the most criticism and feedback. Men, Nobody's talking about the sound of their voice, right? They're talking about the content coming out of their mouths. And so we can have, a, whether it's a discourse that's valuable or not, it's going to be about the content. Unless, of course, those men have an effeminate sounding voice, right? Then immediately, we're going to comment on a man sounding effeminate. And we're going to comment on the sound of female voices being annoying, being shrill, being too high-pitched or too low, or sounding like a man. Women's voices and the sound of a voice already is a distraction. We can't even get to the point where we get to hear their content, right? So why? Why do you think that is, guys? Yeah, why? It's a, the feminine, you're, if for men, right? I only speak for men, and I'll speak for women later, but when I'm permitted to do tonight. Now, the effeminate aspect is we're just taught uh, that that certain specific like you're not you don't you have to be a man right you have to sound like a man and and a man is is aggressive is is strong and is powerful and effeminate men are portrayed and characterized as less than powerful i yeah. can't think of because yeah, females are considered the weaker sex right when it comes to physical strength and, and all that i think this goes back to what T was mentioning though when he brought up Princess sure. Leia, and I think this is actually a really good, you know, Carrie Fisher. Sure, Carrie Fisher. For <laughs> us to to dig into is the why don't we care so much about the change in her voice throughout the course of the film? Why is that a detail that doesn't matter, an inconsistency that doesn't matter, right? And I, I do think that that has a lot to do with how society back to history being written by men and not women is that the notion of silencing women being seen and not heard right is that we care more about how they look or that's what we care about so then when they do speak 
We still don't even have the capacity, right, societally to be willing or to hear the content coming out of their mouths. And I know that is a generalization. There's plenty of women that we are listening to and hearing. But overall, when we talk about why there's more criticism for the sound of a woman's voice is because we've already marginalized women to be objects. And so when that object speaks, we don't care what it's saying. We care that it's talking. Right? And so what are we going to criticize? We're going to criticize the sound of it, right? Men don't have Inner to looks. worry about that because you guys aren't aren't naturally objectified in that way when it comes to say a professional setting or a credible setting, right? Well, maybe so safe is. If you think but... about the when you think about the women in your lives, who are the only women or few of the women that had any authority over you that you listened to when they spoke? You got an older sister and a and a, and a mother. Yeah. But my so it's, my father so it's mother was dynamic. the authoritarian. No. Sure. And so think about that. When you hear a woman's voice and you associate the concept at the earliest of age, straight out of the womb, is a mother. And anything that comes along with that mom dynamic, I think this is where we get into incest porn again, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> how do you guys feel when a female in your life criticizes you, gives you direction, is direct with you, tells you something you don't like hearing? Yeah, T, how do you deal with critiques? Because I criticize you all the time, and, and I, I was curious how you deal with criticism. I don't deal well with it because I have a, I have a very large ego because I have a small penis. And I'm curious how you deal with it, and I know some of the listeners want to know just because I critique you all the time. Does that mean we're two and a half dicks here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me flip it around on you. How do you think that I react to your criticism? I think you handle it very well. I've I am amazed at how resilient and self-aware you are and I credit young people with this and I credit with more social science in the classroom at an earlier age. People don't like to talk about their feelings or how they think or how they feel. And that's that there's kind of a there, that's the divide and I think generation. I'm finding younger people are more aware and that's why things are getting better. So let me insert myself thing. into that. You guys always tell each other that your podcast sucks. Is it any different if I tell you that your podcast sucks? <laughs> as a female voice? I'm kidding. I'm just asking it as a – like you guys are critical of each other even in your in your episodes. Is that different if I were to say that? You guys are like, why would anyone listen to this? And I'm like, you're right. Why would anyone listen to this? Does that feel different if it's coming from a female? Yes. That's for our listeners to share. Yes. They rarely comment on anything that we do. <laughs> so I think maybe where I'm trying to get to, at least from my experience as a female, because I can say this honestly, the idea of having to hear, like having my voice heard, right? Not only professionally, but even personally, that, that the struggle is real, right? I've grown up recognizing that what I understand – you know, to be most received when I say are things like pull my hair, slap my ass, I want to suck your dick, come on my face. Only things that you want to hear us say as women because they're the least likely things that are going to come out of your mom's mouth, right? Like that, <laughs> that makes us not that female in your life that you saw as either a motherly figure or an authoritarian in any form or fashion. You don't want me telling you what to do unless it's stick your dick in my mouth. And so like we as women – know that there are certain things you do want to hear us say, but they relate yes. right back to that sexual objectification of us. But as soon as I want to talk to you about something, whether it's, you know, professional, if it's business related, if it's medical related, if it's in any of these male dominated fields, right? Suddenly it's like, she talks too much. Why is that woman opening her mouth? She should only speak when spoken to, right? We've seen that in the headlines recently. But this notion of women speaking in the boardroom, women speaking at the table. Oh, yeah. Japan. People don't want to hear it, right? And why do we think that is? So is this is why T inherently is against taking out the garbage because his mother told him to take out the garbage. And he has a negative association with a female voice. And that's why he secretly hates taking out the garbage. False. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. There's ice. I don't like falling down. 
I don't like having to find a place to put my garbage. You realize there's no place for me to put my garbage safe because I can't put the garbage can in the street because then it might get hit by a car or it might be in the place of a parking spot. I can't put it on the sidewalk because it would impede somebody's travel. And I can't put it on the apron of grass in between the two because there is now a mountain of snow there where you cannot put a can on top of it because it will just, there's nowhere to put it. Northeastern problems. Yeah. So, so if I were to ask you guys, based on just not even stereotypes or generalizations, but your own experiences or what you believe to be true, who do you think interrupt more in conversations, men or women? I know I do it all the time. And so I would, I, I know it's, it's me, but I've, I've worked really hard to not do that, but I'm aware of it. But how do you think from a societal perspective, do you think it's perceived that women do it more or that men do it more? It's probably perceived that women do it more, but men definitely do it more. They're always screaming over each other. <laughs> and so think about that. We probably perceive women to do it more simply because their voices are less heard and therefore we're trying to get heard, right? Now I'm remembering also- culturally married with children and yeah. Peg Bundy and Al constantly telling her, you know, like, you need to shut up or keep your voice down, that type of thing. Yeah. Who do you think talk more and longer, men or women? No doubt, men. I, I mean, but. Well, I don't know. But what do we perceive? We perceive women too, right? But it's in the relationship aspect, the one on one where women are perceived, and that all women want to do is talk about their feelings and emotions. So now you're starting to talk about what we talk about, not how long we might talk about it, right? Because think about how long you motherfuckers can talk about it's always sunny. You could spend three more hours all of a sudden if I don't stop you from going off on a tangent, right? I've always known men to be more assertive in the classroom, particularly through my my collegiate experience that like just thinking of where I'm in a an area where it's like half men, half women. Men were always the more assertive, assertive and dominant. And then but women always had the more insightful, poignant things to say, but never spoke up. Yeah. So here's what I'll say about my experience with that is this notion of systemic silencing of women where we're supposed to feel bad about that, right? We're supposed to feel shame if what we have to say isn't right or isn't perfect. We don't have the same latitude to take risks and fail um, because we're already trying to work our way up and we're already steps behind. Um, What I've recognized, at least for myself personally, is that Then to be heard, it's really a catch-22 because in order to be heard, I have to speak louder. I have to speak more passionately. I have to be yelling. I have to like – if I really, really want to be heard, right, there has to be emotion behind what I'm saying until I'm finally heard, personally and professionally, right? I've recognized this very clearly. If I'm going to be heard, something a man doesn't have to do, he can simply make a statement and he's heard, I have to be screaming it from the rooftop. But what happens when I scream it from the rooftop? What am I called suddenly? I'm crazy, right? I'm unhinged. I'm unstable. And then I'm listened to only to appease me, but not because they cared of the value that I had to bring to the table. No, no, no. Dick's just crazy, right? We should probably just listen to her and, you know, appease her and just write her off as crazy. Hashtag free Britney. Hashtag free Britney. (laughs) Absolutely, right? Free Britney. (laughs) Free Britney. You people have a podcast about Britney Spears' Instagram posts. I couldn't – that was – all right. (laughs) Have you followed her? It's worth it. (laughs) There's too many podcasts. Like we're – we got our own problems here. No, I ain't saying to listen to the podcast. I'm saying follow her on Instagram. Oh, Britney. It's a true crime detective. (laughs) Like no doubt. Like she posted a picture like last week of a Scrabble board. Oh, we're all trying to crack that code. Hashtag free Britney. <laughs> Jesus. She was basically, she's like a slave. But think about this. So this is what happened. And I don't her, use right? that word like, lightly. When she, ch- <laughs> right? when she well, like, tried are you referring to in the song? Like, I'm a slave. No, like she doesn't have access to her money. People make her fucking shake her ass around like she's a fucking Pepsi vending machine. Fucking out of control. A million a week in Vegas. 
But think about this. This is how then we perceive the difference in women's voices and women's actions, right? Where when Britney comes out and tells you, I'm struggling, or when Britney comes out and tells you the paparazzi needs to quit, or, you know, the pressure is, is unreal, right? Or if she speaks up aggressively like she did to the paparazzi at that stage, right? She's a crazy bitch, right? A man who runs his mouth, though, is, is considered confident, right? We stand back and we go, oh, or he's for cry. real. He's serious now, right? Safe. South Park. Did a whole Britney episode <laughs> <laughs> to the Men point where everybody is following her around, taking pictures of her. She goes insane and literally tries to kill herself and the top of her head is gone. She's literally just exist from the jaw down and they still continue to follow her around and harass her and Again, they're taking the point a little bit too far, but the point is still accurate and based in reality. And I believe that's one of the episodes that they kind of look back on not too favorably. I'm not sure if it was the creators or if I just read some post about it, but... Yeah, they look back on it and they kind of just feel like bad because it's just like it is it is based in reality. This is kind of like, you know, she she was fucking driven insane. And it's like it could have gotten to the point where she fucking did something worse like this. Other people have. I know in our last episode we talked about 9-11. I just want to point out because I watched the Free Britney documentary. Michael Moore uses Britney Spears for fodder in Fahrenheit 9-11 because she says in an interview that whatever the president says, we should follow. Kind of this notion that she just blindly followed, just took it out of context. And then in the Free Britney documentary, he's he's like on the Anderson Cooper show. And he's like, why don't we just leave Britney alone? And he's saying this like years later. You're also part of the problem, Mr. Moore. Just want to point that out. Justin Timberlake also had to come out and reflect on how he talked about Britney Spears, where he gets away with that, right? It's it's easy for men. And that's kind of the whole notion, like guys get to be sluts and girls have to be pure and virginal. And I so think even, even when we see oppression though, like what's happening to Britney, right? When men are oppressed, it's a tragic injustice. When women are oppressed, it's for their own good. I do want to say that in regard to what you just said regarding the Michael Moore thing, Safe, he could feel both ways about that and not technically be perceived as quote unquote part of the problem because he could see that this woman is being used as a propaganda tool and he could have been presenting it as such in Fahrenheit 9-11, right? Like, I thought he used it intentionally to denigrate her. Oh, I mean, I mean, maybe that was the intent, or maybe I, I mean, maybe the intent was she was I, considered dumb. She's a dumb blonde. She, all she knows how to do is shake her ass and shake her tits. We shouldn't listen to her. She has no voice. And then when she did use her voice and was on the subject of politics, she was mocked and laughed at because she was. She's from New Louisiana. Like I don't, I don't know what else to say. I don't know. I don't think when women way, share their opinion. So can I confess yeah. to you guys? I don't want to turn this into a love files, but this this <laughs> this just is is relevant to everything that we're talking about. Is it T? Is it? It's, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> what are the very first? pornographic images I ever looked up was a fake Britney Spears topless image. And it's definitely comments on the objectifying sexual nature that Dick was hitting on. And it's relevant because we're discussing Britney Spears at the moment. So I just thought that I would share that with you. So your first porn was Britney Spears porn. Fantastic T. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just, she was hot at the time, you know, she was Where blowing up. We, before we got 
on this. <laughs> I'm just going to use it maybe as a segue that this whole Britney Spears reality of Britney being silenced under a conservatorship. So for the listeners that don't know, you know, again, her by a court of law, her person. So anything related to her health, her well-being, her as a person, as well as her finances aren't controlled by her and she doesn't technically have control over that. So, you know, being able to trust anything, whether it's her social media or otherwise, there's still questions about how much of that she's in control of and whether it's her or not. Um, so when you think about that, as T said, referring to her as a slave, use that as a microcosm for, you know, societally when women's voices are suppressed and how the history and Britney Spears' history. So when you think about, you know, 40, 50 years from now, you know, and she's long and past relative from a from a historical perspective, you'd be looking back at her as a part of history, right? Who's writing her history, right? You have a lot of activists who are trying to help with that. So that Paris her Hilton. history yeah. isn't written by the silencing of her voice and by the people like her father and the men that are in charge of her life. Because let's not forget, her conservatorship is run and operated by men, by her father, previously by another attorney. So that's who gets to write Britney Spears' history at this stage, right? Andrew Justin Wallet. Timberlake. Justin Timberlake, right? So when we talk right. about Justin Timberlake, he was the voice that was heard then, right? She was deemed the bad person in right. the media, right? And so the entire history of Britney Spears as a human being and as a person was being formulated by men. So let's think about that now historically, right? So why we have to have that fun, awesome catchphrase called herstory instead of history. Yeah, the whole point about that is when you have systematically and historically silenced women vo women's voices as part of all major advancements in our society, you have left out the perspective of half the population of this world. So when we talk about the medical field, right? That's why I was here before. And we talked about endometriosis and we talked about medical treatments. We talked about the history of even determining that something like endometriosis exists, right? How are we going to do that if women's voices are silenced in the field of, med of medicine for so long? Florence and Nightingale. And it's led by men, right? Same with, with the corporate world, right? When we start talking about corporate policies, politics, right? Women are taught and encouraged to cope with politics. Men are taught to leverage politics, right? And so... At the end of the day, when you consistently look at all of these major factions that create a society and women's voices are silenced or you don't want us heard or we're having to fight to be heard, just like any other marginalized group, systematically you have left us out of the past and therefore out of the future. That matters, guys, right? So in my research for tonight's podcast, I did come across a journal study from psychological science and on the voice of authority. So humans, we, us, we have a tendency to perceive certain voices as more powerful over others. And so all of what you just discussed has now led to a chain of thinking that we're now trying to undo and break that women's voices not only matter, but they're just as equal. And I, I think a lot of people are struggling with this. I think they're, it's, it's kind of embedded in the idea of where we're going as a country and why people are fearful. They want to be proud of everything they've accomplished in the history of America. And they want to ignore how shitty they were to the suffragettes or that the suffragettes uh, have also been accused of being racist. So there's this reckoning that we don't want to have. And I don't know if we're just worried that women are going to eventually take over and that we're going to be powerless. And it's going to be like one of my father's science fiction films that he used to love, The Wild Women of Wonga, <laughs> where the women are in charge. And it becomes a, a matriarchal society versus the patriarchal society. Well, is that what you, I don't know? You said the P word that you guys always bring up of what you're afraid of is losing power, right? And this notion that I'll be honest, this idea that women have to assert power in their voices and again be loud and be assertive and be aggressive in order to be heard, right? Is because that's the only thing that makes a society go around is power and who has it at any given point. The power constructs who's in control, who's not in control because of power and who has power over somebody else, right? The domination in society that if 
if we're not conquering something, there's nothing collectivist about our society. We're like, we're all just working together and all have a role. No, someone's always got to have more power than someone else. And so like, it's funny because that's what you're saying, right? You're saying that we, are we f afraid of losing power to women? Are we afraid that women are going to become powerful? And like, I'm here to say that the only reason that we as women are seeking power is coming back to a previous episode where we talked about it, because that's the currency that men have provided in this society that gets you somewhere or doesn't. Now, if power was no longer a currency, right, and respect was, right, mutual respect, other things got used as a currency, then there could be an appreciation for what a female voice brings to the table, what an individual can bring to the table as part of the collective. But again, all we come back to is power. And so if it is about power, absolutely. Then you guys are totally afraid that women are going to be able to overpower you in some form or fashion, right? And and that has nothing to do with us even being women. You're just picking a larger a group, right, that you can come after in an entire demographic that's easy to try to silence. We've done it to all minorities. So why not women be part of that group, right? If power is what we're concerned about, that's all that is. Yeah. You said that with a great deal of authority and confidence, which is actually the key to everything, isn't it, really? As far as, it doesn't really matter how you if sound. If you believe in the power you're... construct, because yeah, <laughs> yeah, suddenly you have to be confident in what you're saying in order to be heard or listened to. Why can't I come with a little vulnerability? Why can't I come to you and say, I don't know if what I'm saying is true, but you're right. You're right, Safe. In order for me to be heard in my job, right, even personally, I have to come to the table with authority and pretend, sometimes fake the funk, that I know exactly what I'm talking about. Because if there is any inkling in my voice of, I don't know what I'm talking about, any risk, any vulnerability, absolutely not, yeah. I'm not heard or listened to. How terrible is that? We as a society fail because of that. We don't allow risk taking. We don't allow vulnerability. We don't allow failure. How terrible. And I know you do your homework, Dick, and I appreciate that you do your homework. And this is also why when choosing a medical provider, I always choose females because I know they did their homework, whereas the guys probably just skirted through on their voices. I'd be careful with that generalization. They're reading, <laughs> they're reading medical books written by men and they're working in a construct that has considerably, you know, has told them, at least as a female patient, I am not a huge fan of the generalization of female doctors. I'm going to be honest about that. But as, as you shared with us in endometriosis, that they, women don't even want to listen to other women, and exactly but they're more likely it. to listen to me because men don't want to listen to me. They yeah. want to listen to women. <laughs> yeah. But, sure. but solely, yeah, because the, the power dynamic and the doctor wants that. So Absolutely. So it all comes back to power. So Why are you telling me that my female doctor is getting her rocks off every time I come in and she's grabbing my nuts? <laughs> You don't have so health care, T. You don't have a doctor. <laughs> yeah, that's not a doctor grabbing your nuts, T. And I don't know how much you're paying her. But... <laughs> She's just a stripper dressed in a Whatever a that out-of-pocket cost is, I hope it's worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She touches your balls and makes you cough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does more than that. <laughs> and, and, and no, if you did have a doctor that was a female, I'm not suggesting that when she touches your dick and balls, she's getting off on it. Because remember, you guys always forget about foreplay, right? And so unless you're also touching her, again, I wouldn't recommend that if she is, in fact, your doctor. Well, I, I, I just figured, but, yeah, this was her way of initiating it, you know? Somebody's got to start somewhere. Why? <laughs> <laughs> as long I want as you got to pay for the first meal. Oh. Yeah, and now and now I show up at her office, I pay her copay, and she's grabbing my dick. Seems like the ball's in my court now, huh? I'm okay if you pay the copay, just not for the like, first meal. You sound like Andrew Cuomo over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Yeah, I feel like that's there's our new compromise, right? If we go out to dinner first date, call it a copay and I'm in. <laughs> stop calling it the first meal and just say i'm paying my copay and i'm oh that's really hot actually yeah <laughs> we're on to something here hashtag copay yeah we're on to something here mm, the power of language is this where we plug uh, a place to eat 
<laughs> Small business of the week. <laughs> Cuff's coming back. We don't have. Cuff is coming back. Black Sheep sells alcohol. They sell local Arizona craft beer. I couldn't be more excited, honestly. So there you go. Cuff's coming back, so get your ass down there. And once you need a little pick-me-up, head over to Black Sheep for your coffee and then... Like a business card business that I'm supposed to plug as well. Who should I get my business cards from? Have we covered everything that we needed to cover? With respect to... The absence of uh, women's voices, the differences between men and women's voices, tone and pitch. Did we get all that? I mean, I think we've talked about it. I think we've addressed it. I don't know if we're going to solve all the world's problems, but isn't at least bringing it out into the open and, you know, saying we recognize this is happening is a problem and that's part of the, the process? I don't think we've covered the shrill aspect enough and i think this was the knock on hillary clinton and donald trump used this to his advantage very well and that's the undercard of anybody who doesn't understand how donald trump got elected i think he what, played well to the what more is there to what more is there to cover on the shrill aspect of it though i mean like in all honesty we talked about how that's an immediate reality that how a voice sounds is what we're going to distract the people with versus the content of a woman's voice because we don't expect to hear content from a woman. So we won't even comment on the content. We're going to comment on the sound, shrill or not. And from what I understand, Hillary Clinton was a very well-prepared woman policy-wise, but because of her association with her husband and uh, an email server, we were told that she's corrupt. Tom DeLong's name was mentioned in that email leak. And again, this isn't <laughs> specific to Hillary Clinton's voice. It was just a tactic that was used and was a, a simple one at that because we played on a reality that we as women all experience, right? I think but even that women hated her. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's a generalization. I'm not saying, and let's be really clear in this conversation, everything I'm talking about about how we judge women and their voices it's not about how men judge women's voices. This is about how we all judge women's voices, me included, right? right? I recognize this from a really young age. There's no winning as a woman, right? I have never had a high-pitched speaking voice ever, right? And so as a child, I was criticized for that. I was criticized for having a voice that wasn't, right? At, to this day, though, if I, you know, am not considerate of how I speak, especially in my professional life, I'm criticized for sounding 12 years old at any given point, right? Or I'm criticized for not having a high enough pitched voice. I'm, I'm constantly criticized. I know it. I know it, right? And so there's a reality of there is no winning. I recognize that from a really young age that the sound of my voice mattered, even to young boys, right? Who were, there was a fear associated with it. And so what do you do? You simply tease it. Because like, wait a minute, why doesn't she sound like all the other girls on the, play, you know, the playground? And I'm like, oh my God, because that's not how I sound, yo. And it's like, you grow you up like that girl. as a female. Yeah, well, something. I don't know. But you start to grow up under those constructs and you recognize Again, that if power is what we're seeking, got it. Glad I don't have a high-pitched voice because that would suck. But really, I want to take that step back and go, I feel for my ladies that have high-pitched voices that can't help it. That's not their fault, right? And like, why wouldn't we be willing to listen to them too? But it all comes back to, I was an object as a child, no different than I'm an object now, no different than that woman with a high-pitched shrill voice is an object too, and it's long as we continue to objectify women first and foremost aesthetically like that, we're going to continue to criticize what they sound like no matter what. And then we get to the content of what comes out of their voices and we for sure don't want to hear it, right? That's why we go, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop talking. You all told me I talk too much. It seems like women usually only get the stage to speak when men want them to. You know? Yeah, and think about what we have to talk about. We end up having to talk about this trials and tribulations. I would much rather be talking to you guys about things that, that matter beyond just 
this concept to you guys, the very fact that we have to have an episode about this, right? Mm -hmm. I could be an authority on all kinds of things. Yeah, weren't you supposed to come back for an aliens episode? Yeah, we were going to talk aliens, conspiracy theories. Well, I got all kinds of tricks up my sleeve, yo. What are your and What like, are your thoughts on nine eleven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, we just right? dropped our first conspiracy theory episode last week. I know, I know, and I'm and I'm all good with being your resident female voice because it is important. I think the point I'm making is that ain't that unfortunate that you even have to have one, right? Is is this topic, right? I think there are things that come from a woman's perspective that I can bring to you guys, and I appreciate you guys letting me do Safe. that. Safe. I think right? she wants a full-time so, spot on the show is what she's suggesting. <laughs> I'm not. If I did, I'd ask, right? Because I'm a direct female as well. But, like, no, like, the honesty, the, in all honesty, I like coming to you guys, sharing things with you that you might not know from a female perspective. I just think this is one of those topics that is really important that we cover, also unfortunate that we have to but i thank you guys for letting us do this and i always appreciate that angle dick but is this where the you're you're announcing that you're going to go solo in your podcasting career <laughs> yeah did that's i just a... announce that <laughs> <laughs> we let her start this one episode off that. we give her one introduction and then that's it she's gone and this is why men don't let women talk because they're worried about power structures changing and she's taken over. It's the same reason that I was convinced Stevie Nicks left, Gwen Stefani, Haley Williams, the men in the band, they were just Fergie. Exactly. Fergie. <laughs> Ferga. Terrified. She ruined Black Eyed Peas, technically. <laughs> I know. I totally agree. She did. <laughs> So Where no, did she, she wasn't even in Black Eyed Peas. She just came out of nowhere for a delicious. Not that I wasn't I happy, but. Here's what I'll say to all that, though, guys, of, you know, the concept of, like, launching oh, for my, <laughs> No, of launching my, you know, career, et cetera, et cetera, in podcasting. No, I think part of the value of me coming on and doing this with you guys is that idea that it's not just enough for me to speak out or for women to speak out. Like, I think for our message to be strong and consistent, and I really do believe this, that women's voices need to be backed by men's. Like, I really do, and that's what you guys are doing here, right? I think that's where some of the faults in the hashtag Me Too era happened, was it was such a female-driven, and I understand why, response that it started to actually silence men too. Men didn't feel confident or capable because we would cancel them or otherwise. I know that's a sensitive subject with it's, you guys. It's, it's also our time to listen as well because we, we've never given women a proper opportunity to be heard, and I think yeah. that's what Me Too was about. I, I agree with that, right? But I also think that the power constructs that happened with Me Too was that scale where women were pow grabbing the power back to feel empowered. And I understand that. I understand it intimately. But what happened was, and yes, I understand men need to listen, but men have a valuable voice in being able to back women. And no different than we can back men. And I don't think we allowed the safe space for men to be able to do that in that movement. And I think that's where it was short-sighted. That was kind of the origins of, of what we're hearing now is the cancel culture. I think when you look at, I mean, cancel culture, obviously origins way back, you know, when you just call people a communist and get them blacklisted and prevent them from ever having a job. But me too was about, Hey, we're going to hold or Bill getting Cosby Chinese food, Mr. Epstein. <laughs> Was it Epstein or the other Hollywood guy, Harvey um, Weinstein? Harvey Weinstein, like holding these people accountable and saying, "Hey, you you can't." Matt Lauer, I was I was watching the Free Britney documentary. He's interviewing Britney. Wasn't he the guy that had like a trap door or like a cage or something where he, he'd lock people in his office? I think R. Kelly, oh. until he was put in prison, was running a whole slave camp in his mansion, right? Well, do you? I, I, I'm trying to date someone or, or meet someone, and they won't listen to Michael Jackson because of their actions. And I was kind of struck by I'm not giving up Michael Jackson anytime soon. And you know what? I recently got back into R. Kelly because it's fucking good music. And those are great voices that I still want to be heard, right? I believe How do you I reckon with that, Dick? I don't know. Um, the fucking dog has decided to start eating right now. So if that's audible, it is what it is, T. <laughs> I believe so, I can he, touch the sky. 
here's what I'll say to the concept of reasoning with any of that. And, mm. and you know, you guys, as much as I'm here generalizing things, because that's our best way to communicate about, you know, large societal issues that are systemic. But at the end of the day, I do believe if, if I'm going to be a woman who believes in, you know, the the right to choose like that that goes well beyond abortion rights right it's the it's to be able to choose lots of things and so we can choose our stance on how we particularly feel about michael jackson r kelly or otherwise right and i'm not going to judge a woman whether she wants to listen to it or not either way right and i don't know if i should be i think there's far better things for me to be doing than than judging those individuals i'm happy to have a dialogue with those folks right and i think i'm hopeful they'd be open to dialogue with you as well and that you would be open to rethinking how you feel about that right now if they're going to judge you for listening to it right i just don't know if i can support you know again that level of judgment but to each their own is what i have to say to that there's far more important debates to be had like the gender of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I always find it fascinating when women use their voices maybe in the same way that men do. So I think little Kim as a as a female rapper, even though it's it's alleged that Notorious Big or it's it's accepted that Notorious Big was her ghostwriter, but little Kim rapped in a very she rapped like a man, right? And so it so now the <laughs> <laughs> I do want to address that because you immediately said it. She rapped like a man. Um, yeah. So what made what was manly about how she rapped? She talked in an aggressive and uh, so I used to get feels on a dick. Now I throw shields to the shit. Handle it yeah. like a real bitch. No, hold on. That's not. I got to do queen bitch. Queen bitch, I think, is probably her raw shit. So I get where you're going with this, though, right? <laughs> you're going I just, with. I wanted, rap. I wanted to rap a little bit, Dick. I don't know if that. <laughs> I understand that you did. And I want to talk about women's voices. Um, and so I think that's a really great point that we should talk about because I also know that very well. I have received throughout my lifetime heavy, heavy criticism for my choice of language and the colorful language that I choose to maintain as part of who I am. Definitely a choice and it's a concerted choice and one that I am comfortable with and has been a part of who I am for a very long time. It definitely takes is a concentrated effort to swear as much as I do. Yeah, right? And so me too. And I think that I get, I get deemed that I have a dirty mouth. There's that concept of um, orbit what, plug. You sound like a sailor, right? That concept of you know you're you have a the mouth of a sailor. Um, that it's unbecoming. Mm -hmm. That it's unladylike. There's so many immediate stereotypes to the fact that I'm a woman when I speak that way, and it takes people aback when they hear those words come out of my mouth versus my male counterparts, that it's just a part of their language that is acceptable and and generally expected. But as soon as it comes out of my mouth, suddenly we're aghast at why she's using words like that. And and I will say not even just what we would refer to as generally swear words, but specifically on the sexual content, which is where I think, say if you were going right there, was when we start talking sexually, right, suddenly... Mm -hmm. Women talking about sexual content is crude and is unacceptable. Unless, of course, it's when I'm telling you, slap my ass, put your dick in my mouth, come on my face, then all of a sudden you want to hear it, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm using any of that type of terminology, like if I call somebody a fucking cocksucker, all of a sudden, <laughs> me calling somebody a fucking cocksucker, right? Or that goddamn Everybody's pun, ears perk up. It's like a <laughs> everybody's it, ears perk up. It's like a right? free preview to a nine hundred line. <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden, like, wait a minute! I'm sorry, she just said what? Like you're selecting right? the like, the women that I you want to talk to. I just said what my male counterpart would say. <laughs> and and then the dick sample, the dick audio sample that you get, is just her calling somebody a cocksucker. Press five for dick now. <laughs> just, that was the last People time you called a cocksucker. I could make so much on my OnlyFans page. <laughs> so you're talking to Dick on okay. the sex line and she just berates you for an hour. 
<laughs> then you got to pay another thirty nine ninety nine for another hour of her just berating you. <laughs> yeah, I don't have time to do this podcast business. I'm moving over to that junction. Right? That sounds like a perfect business venture for me. You could just get honestly, into... you'll get you'll get more likes and clicks <laughs> than we'll ever get. You know? And I screwed yeah, up. Yeah, will you Kingsley offer that up on your way. social media if you want me to call and leave? Um, me be rating a minute on your voicemail, right? You just have to pay a few dollars to catch this guy podcast. I think Carl Castle used to do that on uh, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. <laughs> Voice, yeah, you can have me re my recording on your voicemail. Heck yeah. That'd be awesome. Leave a message, you cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to be fair, she Little Kim said, I used to be scared of the dick. Now I throw lips to the shit. Handle it like a real bitch. Okay. Do you feel better now and that you got that, that off your chest? something I said today in the course of a business meeting. <laughs> like, honestly, I might as well have said that at some point today, right? Like, it will come out of my mouth like, ah, oh, I just got fucked in the ass, right? And like, all of a sudden, <laughs> that's wrong for me to say when it generally felt like I got fucked in the ass in that moment. Oh, I know what you mean. I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> that's how I feel when they put mayonnaise on my McChicken. <laughs> it's just a fucking tragedy there's a lot of things you can't say at work like you just you can't say anything shit at work we talked you about this you should be allowed to though because it is scientifically proven that swearing and using curse words is actually a sign of intelligence oh if I know all of the data to back that up let me know because I've already provided it to my workplace there it is shout out to my shout out to people who don't like us cursing <laughs> there take that dick <laughs> give it to him dick dick's got data big data I did. I brought the data. Like you said, I do my research. I do my homework. You're going to come and tell me that that means I am less intelligent when I am swearing? Don't get me I think started. It, it's, it's, where, it's when and where you curse. And then I, so getting back to the voice, how you say it. So I think there's a New York style to say it, eh, you fucking cocksucker. And then we don't like people with Southern accents. Southern accents are perceived as less than intelligent, right? And so that's also a place. So you, do you feel worse for females who are from the south who have a high-pitched southern accent and they're getting they're getting discriminated by their voice two ways right but is isn't how does that play what, what are you guys thoughts on that so let me actually go back to swearing and you suggesting that it depends on place and time and here's why i can respect i'm not i don't think that's the right word i recognize <laughs> there it is i recognize that there are standards Placate. in our society Placate. Sure. I recognize that there are standards in our society that would suggest there are places that I should and shouldn't use certain words. But here's where I'm coming from is that notion of if you go back to the history of swear words, right, and you don't even have to go read about it. Netflix went and did a flipping series on it with it's Nick Cage. Nonetheless. Nick Cage, yeah. Yeah, so if you go and look at the history of these words, though, and where swear words became suddenly swear words, just like all the rest of our history, remember, women used to actually, you know, dominate societies too, whatever, but now suddenly it's only about men. Well, think about who made up the definitions of those swear words, right? Well, women weren't allowed to write. Right? We were only supposed to sit there and be quiet. And so Susan men made up these definitions, right? So men made up these definitions. Thank you for being able to name, you know, a handful of women that you can consider. Betsy you know, Ross, she historical. knitted. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna ask you to stop naming the few females you can. Mrs. Buttersworth. <laughs> right. <laughs> Aunt Jemima. Um, <laughs> so if you think about it, men wrote those definitions. Well, now take the whole fucking dictionary, right? Think about that book. Our fucking language, the words we have to describe everything mm -hmm. were fucking invented by men. Well, somebody had to write it. That's how a pussy became a fucking pussy. Well, somebody had to write it. You just said the women Maybe couldn't write it. Shakespeare was a woman. <laughs> Dude, should, should, should I have not said that? <laughs> No, I you guys I, are fine. I'm gonna let you have it, right? I'll let your listeners judge you all as I'm they just as they choose. Fucking with right? you, obviously. What did, what did you say, T? I yeah. didn't hear it. No, i No, he said someone had to write it relative to the dictionary, right? <laughs> and you all can have that, right? Hey, no. I'm just I was, I was I'm just like... pointing out the obvious. The entire language, every yes. word coming out of yes, my yes. mouth right now, and what it means, and the definitions associated with it, made up by men. Yeah. Well, isn't it? 
for every great man, there's an equally great woman behind him, right? There's this 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 phrase, the saying. I really do believe historically, like all the great men, they probably were frauds, and their women were actually the brains behind the whole operation, and they did a lot of their work for them while the men got to be out front facing. Well, certainly true when it comes to cults. All great cult leaders <laughs> had a great woman behind them. But on this subject specifically regarding language. I know I didn't have a woman looking over my shoulder when I wrote the definition of trash rocket. <laughs> and that's a great point, right, T? Is that now you're seeing words added to the dictionary year over year. All Every year there's a handful of new words that are added. And so we're starting to see more of that influence, right? But when we talk about the foundation of our language, because so many of our words are rooted in other languages, right? Because we're a, a youthful nation, this language in and of itself. So everything from Latin to French to German to, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know, all of that, you think women were writing all those words? I don't know, hopefully, but I'm doubtful. Well, they wouldn't let you write. So it's a bit of a catch-22. That's exactly upset. it. They get so mad when the language changes, when you have to be more inclusive of of everyone. So the, the we talked about this before because the mailman – is a big Mike. fan of yours, Dick. Shout out. <laughs> it's not I Mike. Ride. Mike is my I neighbor. Want, I know, but you, I understand. But you gave your mailman a fake name to conceal his identity so he doesn't get in trouble. And so he's now forever Mike the mailman. And I definitely want to ride along in his new fancy mail truck. He walks, okay? <laughs> you should see the calves on this man. <laughs> Can I get a picture of them? I'll do my best. He's been passing it over to... He's been training people lately and yeah. I want to, I'm curious, I want to, cause one of them's a female and I want to be like, do you prefer postman or female carrier? What is your preference? <laughs> <laughs> the inclusivity of language and how can we make it work? Female for everybody? carrier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta claim a source. That's a, that's a great episode of the Simpsons early on. Bart is waiting for a package and. He, he calls her a female carrier. So that's, that's where I learned that term. But that's, this is this, these conversations, people talk about the Me Too movement, like as a, re, like we were having this, these conversations were happening in the 90s. These conversations have been happening when women were advocating for equality. And I, I, I always just wonder, I think people just think that everybody is just equal and on the same level and on the same footing and has the same opportunity and the same access and the same internet. And the same job opportunities. And when they're don't privileged, know, do they think that? Jesus, it's it's even in Arizona, like we're talking about COVID and I'm, I'm kind of diverting here, but access to medical resources. I was in Bisbee, Arizona recently. They had signs clear as day saying, hey, wear a fucking mask. We have limited medical resources in our town and we can't just go to to Phoenix General Hospital and St. Joe's Hospital and, and Big City Hospital to get the care we need. And, so then why Phoenix did you go there and spread all your germs? <laughs> I, was, I was doing my Cochise hike. Cochise hid from the U.S. Army. It's the Cochise stronghold hike. I hate to share this with people, but it's it's a beautiful hike. And there's historical value of, of an oppressed person His running from historical. oppressors. And, and I think there's, there's a novelty to that for me that I got to walk the same trail that Cochise did to hide from the U.S. military as they were trying to complete an act of genocide, which wasn't a word then because we didn't even have a word for genocide until post-World War II. Were, until men were <laughs> killed and we had to come up with a word for it. And then they don't want to talk about the genocide. They just want to fucking throw up the statues and be like, we're not going to tell the whole story here. Same with Dr. Seuss right now. I don't know. It's just, it's, there's just a lack of context. And I, and it, and I think Moving forward, all our future conversations, you're right, Dick. We shouldn't have to talk about voices. There is so much more we could be talking about. And your contextual analysis is so appreciated. And I hope women out there make sure that they let their voices be heard, no matter how shrill they are. Right. And yeah, has no, anybody I ever listened to that. some of Yoko Ono's music? I mean, fuck. I'm more of a John. Did... No, John Lennon. Right, I but she wasn't she behind him, helping to. I only say that because there's songs where Yoko is literally just screaming. She's just screaming 
for minutes on end at different pitches. Like, oh, 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 oh. Look at that a history lesson. And I can name I just- <laughs> so many men that call that music too when they scream into a microphone. Oh, oh, I know. I know. She's Who's successful. Your, who are you? That's what I'm saying. We should listen to women of all voices. She is proof that even having a shrill voice doesn't have to stop you. So, Dick, if I ask you who's your favorite musical artist, I should be able just to say artist and you should be able to name me a male or female, right? But what if I do I have to preface and say, that like, hey, can you tell me who your favorite female artist is? There's still that gendered construct within our language, right? We're trying to we separate. You have a favorite man and a favorite woman. Yeah, and I don't think I'm trying to separate that, right? I think I'm trying to be aware of um, when we – to recognize how we systemically keep women's voices. And I say this inclusively to, you know, transgendered folks. I say it to anybody who identifies as a woman, right? Because that struggle is real. If you're identifying as a female and our society is identifying you as a female, you get to own all the perceptions and stereotypes that come along with it. So I think all I'm asking for is first and foremost – a little bit of awareness, right? Let's think about it. Let's think about how we perceive women speaking. Let's think about that, right? Like we can get real caught up on language and I'm not going to say that that's not worth it, but I think sometimes it can be a distraction, right? Because we could sit here and talk all day long about how to create more inclusive language so that I can hear more men speak longer using more inclusive language. What are we not doing? We're not listening to women. So like sports broadcasters, great, especially glad, glad that you took all the time to figure out a better way for all that time you're spending speaking when women aren't to figure out how to make sure your words are more inclusive. What I'm looking forward to is where we don't chastise publicly the fact that women are speaking. Like, when are we going to stop doing that? Right. And then I think the language piece is a component to that, but we probably wouldn't even be struggling so much with a male dominated language if we got to hear more women. It would become commonplace to start hearing. Doris Burke. It would start becoming commonplace to hear more inclusive language in general, I think. Honestly. I think that's been the critique is that men don't want to, especially on sports as it relates to that. And, and so there's Aaron Andrews or you know Hannah Storm. And it's like, oh, we don't want to. I can't listen to this. That's the criticism I hear from men. Yeah, we're not credible as well. So think about that. Leslie because Visser. We're not credible on particular topics that are male dominated. Well, again, you've created this society that, you know, everything of value, importance, and status is male dominated. And so how do you maintain your power structures? By continuing to suggest that women aren't capable, qualified enough to speak on a sport they're not allowed to play, for instance. Right? It's like real sports with Brian Gummel. He's got a pretty good round table there. He's got Soledad. He's got a... Uh, yeah, you know, no, Bernie. I agree. And he's even <laughs> talked about this very concept. But why do women have to struggle in that industry? Right? I know that in the industry that I work in, it is a very male-dominated field. And so the reality of credibility when I speak, absolutely. I can't have an inkling, like I said, I cannot have an inkling of doubt in my voice when I speak or I'll be eaten alive. How unfair is that? I always appreciated when Bruce Arians was being interviewed prior to the lead up to the Super Bowl that he just won uh, as Tampa Bay head coach. He's like, it doesn't matter, men or women, like teaching is teaching. As long as you're helping someone to get better, it doesn't matter what your voice should sound like or, you know, what what bathroom you use. You know, teaching is teaching. And I, I think there is valuable information capable of coming from anybody. Yeah, and I just think that we need to recognize that silencing women's voices silences the perspective of half the world's population, and it matters. I got a lot of friends with a lot of daughters. I hope they listen to this, and if you are listening to this, what the hell are you doing listening to this? (laughs) Go read a fucking book, you assholes. I give you like four of them. (laughs) So I think what I usually tell young women especially is that notion of being patient as, because it's easy to get frustrated when society can take so long to change. But don't be silent, right? So you can be patient but not silent all at the same time. Because I have to execute patience on a daily basis, but I'm certainly not silent. Well, Dick, I appreciate all your insight this evening. 
Safe. Is there anything that you wanted to add to this conversation? T, are you wrapping up? Is that what I'm hearing? Unless there's anything else that you'd like to give to our listeners before we go. I would like to speak on one thing that is unrelated to women's voices, if I'm able to speak on something else. Dick, it's a the floor is yours. Yeah, it's a quick, it's a quick, um, <laughs> it's a quick facts on vax um, update. Oh, yes, I know facts on vax. <laughs> I know there have been some listeners who were inquiring after um, my last statement about the mRNA vaccines that are out there, so the Pfizer and the Moderna, and specifically polyethylene glycol being one of the lipid carriers that's in those, and that the, some folks showed some um, concern about that. I wanted to share that I do believe, like I said, I'm a woman that believes in choice, and that means I do believe in every individual's choice to do the research and determine if they feel safe or confident putting any particular pharmaceutical or otherwise in their body. And so an update on that, I had shared that there was the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that was going to be coming out soon and that we were waiting to see what the ingredients were going to be because that's not an mRNA vaccine so it doesn't have a lipid carrier um, so it's a vector virus vaccine uh, what I have learned since its approval earlier um, this week was that that particular vaccine does also have polysorbates in it which interacts mm. the same way as polyethylene glycol does for people with sensitivities I will share that it is my understanding the CDC has come out and stated that the allergic reaction to these things are very very low they're still encouraging people um, to consult with your doctors and get them I, again, I'm a proponent for choice and the choice of whether these are things that you're willing to put in your body and potentially have consequences to short term or long term. But I just wanted to confirm that and clarify that for some of your listeners who heard me mention that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was going to be different than the mRNA vaccine. It is, still has polysorbates in it. Facts okay. on facts. Facts on, on facts. <laughs> <laughs> I no 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 Dick should have the last word so we're just gonna edit this out none of this is relevant <laughs> All right. Dick has the last word facts on no. facts that's how it ends Bang. I was I I simply want to thank you guys for listening that's all we're asking for well thank you so for joining thank you us for listening yeah and thank you for letting me be heard mm -hmm. do you want do you want to do the outro too, Dick? Instead of T doing that? Um, I didn't have a man write me that script, so no. <laughs> you may join our conversation on Facebook or Instagram at Catch the Sky Podcast or on Twitter at CTS Terry or at CTS Safe. That's S A I F. And how can the people get a hold of you if they want to, Dick? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at I'm Dick Francisco. So that's I am Dick Francisco. Or you can find me on Instagram at the Dick Francisco. Hit me up if you want me to um, leave you a mean and degrading message on your on your voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> She's for hire. You this is a new business. First, first, first hundred followers are free. <laughs> <laughs> I love this racket. <laughs> that's uh cocksucker shirts it's trash rocket shirts hamster ball shirts and then cocksucker shirts <laughs> like dick like a picture of dick <laughs> cocksucker <laughs> so much opportunity oh uh, this we're sitting on a gold mine here dick called me a cocksucker <laughs> bumper stickers <laughs> dick francisco called me a cocksucker i like it what do you think dick i'm in <laughs> I might be a woman, but I'm still a capitalist too, right? That's right. <laughs> Get the bread. Get in where you fit in. <laughs> well, thank you for joining no, us. Thank you guys again. Yeah. Absolutely. And until next week, everybody out there, keep trying to catch the sky. <laughs>